did also mention that, that Brooklyn is where he'd like to go. Um, in terms of his health, you know, I think what I can tell you is, you know, I feel Dwight's rehabilitation process is, is progressing in the right direction. Um, you know, and I, I don't, do not believe his health will be an issue going forward. Um, you know, other than that, in terms of specifics, you know, I try to make it a, a practice anytime I have a discussion with one of our players to, to ensure that those specifics and details of the conversation remain between us and remain private. Uh, I think there's a certain level of trust that you have to build and, and, and subscribe to, and, and that's my plan with whoever I talk to, whether it's Dwight or anyone else on our roster. So um, keeping keeping sort of that tact in mind, I, I guess I would I would leave it to Dwight to, to share any details he, he wants to share about the conversation. But again, out of respect for the, the trust and the privacy that, that we're trying to build, I'm not going to really elaborate on the specifics of, of what else we, we discussed. Rob. Okay, just uh, just hold on. If you can wait for a mic, and just because we're streaming, please uh, say your name and affiliation. And we got to have one. Go ahead, Brian. Brian Schmitz, Miranda Sema. What do you do, Rob, when your franchise player says he wants to go to one team and one team only? You know, we, uh, as I told Dwight, I said, you know, I, I don't know. I have to think about what you're telling me. I want to take some time to, to process everything. And, and the answer is, you know, we're going to continue to to map out what we feel is in the best interest of our team, and we're going to make you know any decision that we decide to to go forward with will be one that we feel puts our team in a position to, to be successful moving forward. Joe, Rob, Joe Kepner, WFTV. Is the franchise as frustrated as the fans seem to be, and to the point where you're just ready for this to be over with, one way or another? Well, you know, again, you know, our fans certainly deserve some details and they deserve some information. And I can assure everybody is that we're going to do what we feel is in the best interest of the organization. So we're we're within, we're within a fluid process right now, and, and the process is one that we don't feel we should put any parameters on. We feel that we should continue to work through all the information we're gathering and, and the ideas we're coming up with, and and we'll make a decision, you know, at some point. And whatever that decision is, it'll truly be the, the decision we feel puts us in the best position. Jerry. Rob, Jerry O'Neill of ESPN Radio Orlando. Can you share with us how soon in the conversation with Dwight did he mention he wanted to be traded, and what was the tone of the meeting and the conversation, especially from his end? It was the 87th minute, <laughs> 40 seconds. I, no, I don't really know. Um, we met for a while. And we talked about a, a bunch of different things. It was. It was engaging, it was uh, polite, it was, uh, you know, Dwight was articulate, and, and we had a good chat. Mike? Mike Simon, Fox News here in Orlando. Can you assess the chances of, of Dwight Howard wearing a Magic uniform again, and, and if so, being ready for the beginning of the regular season? You know, I, I don't know. You know, again, um, you know, where we're at, we're, we're working through some, some variables, we're working through some, some different options, we're working through some internal discussions, so I don't really have any type of timeline or, or clarity for you on that. Uh, but what I can tell you is after speaking with Dwight, you know, I feel like his rehab's going well, he's progressing in the right way, and, and uh, you know, he'll be ready to go. Mike? Mike Bianchi, Orlando Sentinel. Dwight has, has changed his mind before. Is there any hope on the Magic's part that, that you can convince him to change his mind again? You know, I'm not sure. You know, I think we're going to continue to, to engage with, with Dwight and his representation, and, and we're going to continue to, to work through the, the processes that we have internally to, to make sure that we make whatever decision we make and, and make sure it's a good decision for us. Okay. Rob, uh, David Finkelord, WKMG here in Orlando. What, what, do you, what do you make of this? It's kind of a two-part question. What, what are your thoughts? And does Dwight say when he sat up there March 15th in three months, he signed his extension and talked about loyalty. Why the change of mind in three months, and, and what do you make of that? Yeah, you know, you know I'm not sure. I, I, I'm the new guy here, so I, I'm not sure um, about anything that happened before you know, June 22nd, I believe, is the day I was hired. Um, so, you know, it's, it's something where we're going to continue to try to engage Dwight and speak with Dwight and speak with his representation. And, um, you know, I, I really don't.
don't have much knowledge as to what occurred prior to, to me being here. Dave? Uh, Rob, Dave Bowman, Bright House Sports Network. Uh, the term blackmail uh, was something that came up uh, in reports in the last couple of days, and Dwight came out yesterday and said he never said blackmail. Was that something that was conveyed to you in part of that conversation with him or his people that he was blackmailed into re-signing in Orlando? Yeah, no, that, that was not something that, that came up, and it's, it's not something I'm aware of at all. What, what sort of things, Rob, were you unaware of in that conversation with Dwight and his people regarding his situation in Orlando? Did, did you go into, into that conversation cold at all? What do you mean? I, I'm not sure. Were there any things that he had to say about it that took you aback? You know, Dwight, I think, was very candid and very honest in what he was telling me, and I was pretty candid with him, and I thought we exchanged some, some pretty good dialogue. You know, it was, it was candid, it was open. No, not, nothing he told me to bring it back. Josh? Rob, Josh Robbins, Orlando Sentinel. Given that Dwight has been public that he will not re-sign with any other team, a suck, well, he had, didn't mention the Nets, but he's referring to the Nets. To what degree does that hamstring you from finding a, a, a palatable deal with any other team aside from the Nets? You know, that's a good question. What I can tell you is, you know, he's Dwight Howard. He's one of the best players in the NBA, so uh, a lot of teams have interest in Dwight, as they should, and, you know, it's our job to, to continue to analyze what's in the best interest for us and, and how we go about making that decision. Brian? Rob, some people look at the Nets roster, and they see Brooke Lopez and not much else, and they just signed Gerald Wallace. Do you need a multiple team deal to, com to complete this thing? We need to do what's in the best interest of our organization. And I know I've said that 60,000 times here in the past you know, four days, but um, we're going to just analyze all options. We're going to analyze the full menu of whatever it is we have in front of us, and you know, if we need to make a decision, we'll make one. Michelle? Did your heart sink when Dwight said he wanted to leave? Were you heartbroken? You know, we just looked each other in the eye, and we had an adult conversation, and, and it was pretty emotion neutral. You know, I think that, that again, he was pretty candid, I was candid with him, and, and we had a good discussion. Shannon? Rob, Shannon, I was only the Sentinel. Um, at what point would you like to have uh, this situation resolved? What's your timeline? The timeline is fluid. The process is fluid. Um, our staff is, is you know, trying to, to work on a, a bunch of different things, and I think it would be you would be short-sighted to put any tight parameters on, on the timeline. The timeline is the timeline, and when we feel like it's moving at a certain pace that we feel good about, then you know, we'll, we'll react accordingly and, and put ourselves in a position to make a decision some way or the other. Kyle? Kyle Heights, our Associated Press. Rob, how does this affect your um, you pursuing the head coach and your head coaching search? Because obviously the head coach is going to probably want to know, you know who the biggest player on, the, on, on this roster is going to be there or not. Yeah, you know, we're, gonna, we're, we're moving forward with our process, and, and the coach we do end up hiring is, is going to be someone who wants to coach the Orlando Magic. John? Rob, John Denton, Orlando Magic. Uh, if you deem that, that you can't make a trade with the Nets, how, how does that affect this process, and you know, can you go into the season with Dwight? Is, is that an option? Again, you know, I, our job is to, right now, the first week of July, is to sort of assess what we know, try to gather information on what we don't know, and again, we're going we're to analyze all the options, we're going to analyze internal and external options, and we'll make a decision that, again, we feel is the decision we need to make. Josh? Rob, Josh Robbins, Orlando Sentinel. What is your broad conception of what is in the best interest of the Magic in the sense of, are you seeking a package that includes uh, young veterans, or are you seeking primarily a package uh, that includes uh, draft picks. What's, does this team need to get really bad before it gets really good, or can you compete and make those incremental improvements? You know, I, I don't know the answer to that. The answer is it's all relative to, to whatever the decision is we're going to make. And, you know, there are certain scenarios and certain variables that, that are available, and there are certain things that we're going to have to make decisions on, and 
I don't really have an answer for that right now. I really don't. Jerry? Rob, Jerry O'Neill, ESPN Radio Orlando. If I might ask about a couple of other roster players. Jameer on Friday opted out of the final year. This week is a week the Magic have to make a commitment one way or the other to J.J. Redick. Regarding Redick, do you have a timeline for that? Obviously this week sometime. And your conversation with Jameer, your reaction to his opting out. Sure. So, so J.J., we, we have to make a decision on this week. And, and again, I'll tell you that we're still working through that process. But J.J. is someone who is about the right things. I think he brings a professionalism and a work ethic and a commitment to, to team concept that I think will be something that will work around here and continue to work around here if that's the direction we decide to go in. And, and Jameer, you know, we've, we've continued to be in discussions with, with his representation and Jameer himself.